Lecture 27, The Ultimate Intelligence, Integrated Thinking, Part 1. This is Lecture 27 of the Leadership Course. There is a management scholar named Roger Martin who is the dean of a business school in Canada. He studied over 50 business leaders and found that if there is one common trait among them, it is integrated thinking. In this lecture, we will discuss integrated thinking, which is the third topic in the practice of leadership development. Deep thinking belongs to intelligence, and the ability of integrated thinking is the highest level of intelligence, which is more advanced and harder to master than the decision-making and system thinking we have discussed before. Some may ask, why emphasize intelligence when emotional intelligence is said to be more important? I want to tell you that for leaders, emotional intelligence is important, but intelligence is more important. You may have seen successful leaders with low emotional intelligence, but you will never see a successful leader with low intelligence. For leaders, intelligence is more important than emotional intelligence, and this is not just my opinion. I have mentioned an emotional intelligence master named Daniel Goleman. When Goleman visited China, a Chinese business journalist interviewed him and asked for advice for Chinese managers. Do you know what his advice was? He said that he believed Chinese managers should first improve their intelligence. He said that intelligence is a prerequisite for becoming a leader. One dot integrated thinking is the most mature mental model. As I mentioned earlier, integrated thinking is the highest level of intelligence. The renowned psychologist Howard Gardner has a similar view. He summarized four levels of mental models, with integrated thinking being the most mature, yet most people do not possess this mental model. Let me briefly explain the four mental models Gardner identified. The lowest level is dualistic thinking, which divides the world into good and bad, with good ultimately triumphing over evil. Gardner calls this mental model the five-year-old's mental model. Essentially, this is how five-year-olds view the world. Why do children around the world start formal schooling at around age 5? Because if they don't, they will remain at the level of dualistic thinking. The next level up from dualistic thinking is striving for fairness. This mental model acknowledges that good people have flaws and bad people have strengths. Gardner calls this the 10-year-old's mental model. The next level up from striving for fairness is relativism. This mental model believes that there is no such thing as good or bad. Gardner calls this the 15-year-old's mental model, which is equivalent to the adolescent stage of thinking. So far, we have discussed three mental models, dualistic thinking, striving for fairness, and relativism. None of them are mature enough. The most mature mental model is the fourth one, which Gardner calls personal integration. This mental model believes that good and bad are relative, and you need to choose a position that integrates the interests of all parties as much as possible. Gardner's personal integration is integrated thinking. Gardner calls personal integration the adult's mental model. However, Gardner explicitly states that many people, even those who have received an education, remain at the level of five or ten year old mental models. Even among adults, dualistic thinking is the most popular mental model. 2.to have both fish and bear's paw. Now you know that everyone learns dualistic thinking at around age 5, but only a few people can ultimately learn integrated thinking. These few people become great leaders and create great companies. Let me use a Chinese proverb to help you understand these two completely opposite mental models of dualistic thinking and integrated thinking. Dualistic thinking is, you can't have both fish and bear's paw, integrated thinking is, I want to have both fish and bear's paw. Let me give you an example of a leader who practices integrated thinking. You must have heard of Procter & Gamble, PNG. PNG had a CEO named A.G. Laffley, who is now retired and is considered one of the most successful CEOs in P&G's history. What did Laffley do? He both cut costs and innovated vigorously. Laffley said, 
if it's a choice between two things, we won't succeed. Everyone can make a choice between two things. That's how the world works. You sacrifice one thing to get another, but then you can't become a leader in the industry. Lafley's words actually explain why dualistic thinking is low-level and integrated thinking is high-level. Dualistic thinking is a choice between two things, either cutting costs or innovating vigorously, you can't have both fish and bear's paw. Choosing between two things is easy, and many people can do it. Integrated thinking is that I want both fish and bear's paw, I want to cut costs and innovate vigorously. This is certainly difficult, and only outstanding people and outstanding companies can do it. 3.Case Study, Starbucks As I mentioned earlier, Lafley at PNG both cut costs and innovated vigorously. The expression, both this and that, is the way leaders who practice integrated thinking express themselves. They don't say, either this or that, they say, both this and that. Let me give you another example of a leader who practices integrated thinking. In a previous lecture, I gave an example of Starbucks founder, Howard Schultz, who is a master storyteller and an integrated thinking expert. Listen to how Schultz talks about Starbucks. Count how many, both this and that, expressions there are in this passage. I have always believed that Starbucks can both create an authentic personal experience and become a profitable global company. Yes, I want our baristas to serve customers with genuine smiles and be efficient. Yes, I believe our taste and environment can both reflect local culture and provide consistent taste and high-quality coffee. 